In this video tutorial, we are going to be putting together a lot of the skills we've learned over the past few weeks in Python to create ourselves a shopping list app. So basically this app is going to look just like what you see on your screen at the moment. And basically we've got a few things on our shopping list that we need to collect from the shops. And we're going to be able to perform any one of these six different functions on our shopping list. So we can view what's on it, we can add and remove items from it, we can do a search through the shopping list to check if a particular item is on there. Uh, we can count how many items are on the list and we can also clear that list. So just empty what's on it. All right, so it looks kind of complex, but if we break it down, it's not too hard. Okay, so let's get started by creating ourselves a new document in Mu. Now, once we've um, created a new document, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna print a bit of text on the screen. Now, the text we're gonna print on the screen is gonna span across multiple lines. So when you open your bracket up, make sure you do three single quotation marks, just to tell the computer that we are gonna be writing something that spans across multiple lines. Now, I'm gonna put a heading in first. So I'm gonna put in a few hashtags there. It's not a comment that I'm writing here. The hashtags are there just to make the heading stand out a little bit. You don't have to use hashtags. You could use like the asterisks or something like that. Okay, I was just using hashtags for this example. And I'm gonna put in capital letters, shopping list. And I'm gonna put three quotation, ah, sorry, three hashtags after it. Now on the next line, I'm just gonna leave it empty and then go down another line. And I'm gonna give an instruction to the user that says, select a number for the action that you would like to do. And I'll put a colon. Okay, now I'm gonna leave another empty line below that and I'm gonna list out the six things that the user can do, oops, with this shopping list. Okay, so make sure you put in some numbers there. Number one is going to be view shopping list. Number two is gonna be add item to shopping list. Number three is going to be similar to that, so I'm just going to copy that one there. It's going to be remove item from shopping list. Okay, that's good. Um, number four is check if item is on the shopping list. Oops. Number five is how many items on shopping list. And finally, number six is just clear shopping list. So we're gonna be able to empty what's on it. All right, and on the final line there, just close off your three quotation marks and your bracket, just to say that that print statement is finished up now. So I'm gonna save this and just run it to show you what it looks like so far. So save it into your digital technologies folder, call it shopping list app, and give it a run just to see what you've got so far. You should have something similar to what I've got. All right, so that should be looking pretty good. Heading at the top, we've got our instruction here for the user to follow, and then we've got our menu of six different items that the user can select from. All right, so let's just stop that code from running and move on to the next section. Basically, all we need to do next is ask the user what selection they would like to make. They need to make a selection out of these six options. So we wanna ask them which function they would like to perform on the shopping list. And to do that, we just ask a question. So we use our input function. So inside quotation marks, oh sorry, in bracket and quotation mark, we want to say make your selection, colon, space, close your quotation marks, close your bracket. And that is going to ask the question to the user, what selection would they like to make? As you can see here, it's asking us for to make a selection. So if I was to type in say number four and press enter, that would be the end of my program. Okay, the computer would completely forget that number and wouldn't know what to do next. So for the computer to remember the selection that we've made, we need to create a variable. The variable goes at the start of the line here, and if you don't know what a variable is, it's something that holds information. So in this case, the computer is gonna hold on to the number that the user types in for their selection, so it remembers it. And we'll be using that number again a bit later on. So the name of my variable is going to be called selection, and I'm just gonna write equals. So now when we type in our number, the computer is gonna store it inside this variable called selection. And we're gonna call up that variable very shortly. Okay, so the next step, the computer's remembered our selection. What we need to do now is actually process that number. 
Okay, so if the user types in number one, then we want to show them what the shopping list looks like. If they type in number two, we want to show them, oh sorry, we want to be able to add an item to the shopping list. Okay, so let's start coding up the next section, which is a whole bunch of if statements. I'm going to start with if selection equals equals one in quotation marks and then a colon. Okay, this is the start of our if statement. So basically it's saying if the selection up here on the line above is equal to one. Now because we're not doing a calculation, we need to use two equal signs here. Okay, and we want the computer just to basically assume that this number here is actually a string or a letter. Okay, that's why I've got quotation marks around it. That's why we're using two equal signs. We do that when we use letters or strings. Okay, so if the user's selection is equal to one, what do we want the computer to do? Well, I'm not going to give you that code just yet. I'm going to give you that code in the next video. So for now, we're just going to add in a keyword in Python called pass. Okay, pass just allows us to keep running our code without causing an error. It doesn't actually do anything, it just sits there. It's like a temporary line of code that we'll delete later on once we put the proper code in. Okay, so let me just show you what that does. It doesn't do anything special, but our app runs. Okay, we've got the six different things we can pick from. So if we make our selection as number one and press enter, our app just finishes. Okay, no error pops up. Okay, but our app just ends. So that's all I want for now. Now we need to do that for all of these six different options. So I'm just going to add in a bunch of elif statements. It's going to say on the next line, elif selection equals equals two colon. Then I'm going to write the word pass again. Now I'm going to copy that and paste it a few times. So the next one's going to be number three. Next one down is going to be four. Next one down is five, and the last one will be six. Okay, so we've got our six options in there. If the selection is equal to one, two, three, four, five, or six, we're just passing it at the moment, which means it's just going to sit there and do nothing. It's just one other thing I want to do. I want to add in an else statement at the end. This means if the user types in anything else besides these six numbers, we want to tell them that they've made an invalid selection. So we're just going to print a message that says, you did not make a valid selection. Okay, and we'll just close that print statement off. Let me show you how that's going to look. We'll just give that a run. If I type in a number that's not on this list, so if I type in eight and press enter, we get the message, you did not make a valid selection. And that's fair enough, and that's the end of our program. If I was to type in any of the other numbers on that list, say number 5 this time, the program just ends. Okay, so that's looking pretty decent. Last thing I might show you in this video is just how to add some items to the shopping list. So it's ready to go when we start coding up the rest of our app. So I'm going to create a variable, or basically a list, sorry, called shopping underscore list. And I'm going to write equals, and because I'm creating a list, I need to use the square brackets. And I'm simply going to add items to my list by putting quotation marks around words and putting a comma to separate the items. So I'm going to put in apples, bananas, prongs and cat, carrots. Uh, what else do we want? Potatoes, maybe. And then I'll close my square bracket off. And that's my list mode. Okay, so I've now got a shopping list with four items on it. Last thing I want to do in this video is just add a few comments in, just so you know what I'm talking about um, with my code. So um, we could probably put one up the top here. So I'll put a hashtag in and we'll just say um, display the main menu. Coming in down here, we might put a hashtag that says ask the user to make a selection. And in the if statement section, we'll put in a comment that says determine which action to perform based on user 
selection. Alright, that's not too bad. Um, do we need one further down? We could probably add a comment just here near the shopping list. So hashtag and it says add a few items to the shopping list. There. So I reckon that'll do us for this video. We should have a main menu working. We also have this function here working if the user does not make a valid selection and we've also added four items onto our shopping list. So what we'll do now is stop the video and come back in part two and start coding up these if statements. Okay, so I'll catch you in the second part.